Well, what do we do with this, this area, electromagnetic life? I'm an immunologist and a microbiologist by training, but believe it or not, you cannot teach base, the basic biologies we teach here are cell biology and general biology. And in those first courses for freshmen, this comes up. There are electric currents, there are, there are um, what we call membrane potential electricity across the membrane of the cell that make life work. Without it, we don't have sensation. We can't touch, we can't speak, we can't feel, we can't hear, we can't use our brain. So this electrical issue at the, at the cell level makes life possible as we know it for us and many animal creatures. So we can talk about actually the body electric. Where do we start with this? Um, let's start looking at uh, animals and then we're going to look at how the electric current in living things, especially humans, makes this whole sensory idea possible. But there's some interesting things about fish. We find a lot of uh, electrical activity in fish, even fish using that electric activity to do, do what? Shock things, right? So they can eat them. And you say, did, where was that in God's good creation? Well, let's talk about that. Let's first talk about these interesting fish. Here is the ghost knife fish. And um, this is one of the few fish that gives an electric shock. Um, and we're not talking about tons of volts here. For this one, but it's the one fish where they've actually seen a spark in the water. If it's near something that it can shock, you can you can see why they call it a knife fish. Do you see that shape there of a knife? Um, another famous fish is a torpedo ray, and the torpedo torpedo ray was dissected by a famous anatomist, a British surgeon called Doctor. His name was Doctor John Hunter in the 18th century. And he was, like many scientists, we didn't even use the word scientist, many natural philosophers of that time, he was into everything. And he, he couldn't stop dissecting things, okay? You would not want to have a pet if you knew Dr. Hunter, right? Because you'd be looking at that guy and say, I'm gonna, I want to dissect that. Um, he um, dissected the torpedo fish here, this torpedo ray, and he found these stacks of cells and membranes. And what you have is a nerve cell coming down and innervating these muscular cells. And they were piled up on the cheek area of that torpedo fish. You see the grayed out area of the torpedo fish, or the yellow area up there. Stocks, uh, stacks and stacks. And that was producing electricity. Um, and again, this creature could produce about 20 to 50 volts. Um, and uh, just to give you more history, Dr. Hunter lived at the time of Edward Jenner. Who is Edward Jenner? You should know about Edward Jenner after the last two years. He was the first one to use a vaccine against smallpox over 200 years ago, and smallpox has been wiped out, thankfully. Then we can look at the life of uh, Alexander von Humboldt, famous German naturalist and philosopher, uh, and, and, and someone interested in the, in the romantic era of science. This is a painting that was made based on his trip to Venezuela. And um, these, this is a tribal group in Venezuela that is hu uh, hunting for eels using their horses. How would you hunt for eels using your horses? Doesn't look too good, does it? What did they do? Why did they, why did they have their horses go in the water with the eels? So they could shock themselves, so they would get all their volts out, all right? Now this creature, an electric eel, which is a knife fish, it's not really an eel, it's a knife fish can shock at 600 volts. So these horses are being shocked, they're moving around, the, the eels, some are getting killed, some are getting and most, most depleted of their volts, and then you can see the natives would go in and grab them up because they're good eating. In fact, you're going to hear for Dr. Horner today, who uh, has, we have basically have a campus in Italy every summer that he runs. And here is an Italian eel on a stick. Okay, for an Italian meal, looks doesn't look too bad. You're not you're you're not going to be shocked, 
right? So maybe, maybe shocked by the price or something, but not shocked, okay. So um, 600 volts. So here is the electric eel, and, um, and they can also, they can give you a pretty good shock just if you put your hand in the water and, and get close to them at a 600 volts. But if they, they can also do a thorough job by making their body into a circuit. They have a positive end, I think, at the head and a negative at the tail. And you can see that this eel is doing, he's captured the fish, it's still moving around, he shocked it, and he continues to shock it by making a circuit on it and then, then eats it.